Welcome back to the Weekly Interceptor for your Air and Missile Defense News Update. This week we will discuss the recent hearings conducted by the U.S. House Committee on Armed Services on June 15th and June 23rd. The U.S. House Committee on Armed Services, commonly known as the HASC, is a standing committee of the United States House of Representatives responsible for funding and oversight of the Department of Defense, DOD, and the United States Armed Forces. It also directs substantial portions of the Department of Energy. The HASC has general jurisdiction over defense policy, ongoing military operations, organization and reform of the DOD, technology transfer and export controls, joint interoperability, the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, detainee affairs and policy, and much, much more. Its regular legislative product is the National Defense Authorization Act, which must be signed into law each year by Congress. The act was first made into law in 1962. In June this year, the House Armed Service Committee conducted two important hearings that involve air and missile defense directly. The first hearing that was conducted was the HASC Subcommittee on Strategic Forces Hearing on Fiscal Year's 22 Priorities for Missile Defense and Missile Defeat Programs. The purpose of the hearing was to evaluate the President's budget request in the context of DOD's missile defense and defeat policy priorities and requirements. In the duration of the hearing, questions were directed to Lieutenant General Daniel Carbler, Commanding General of U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command, and U.S. Representative Mike Turner, Ranking Member of the Subcommittee. After the opening statements, Representative Turner focused on impacts of continuing resolution on operations, research and development, and procurement due to the President's late budget request submission. Lieutenant General Carbler stated that a continuing resolution will impact the Army's ability to support testing at the Reagan test site. When asked about the effectiveness of the missile defense network in a contested spectrum environment, he responded with confidence that use of cyber defense tools and consistent collaboration with the MDA, or Missile Defense Agency, that the Army is able to respond to any incident. Lieutenant General Carbler also informed the House that the first American Iron Dome battery will be ready for deployment in September and a second shortly after. Later in June, a second hearing took place in which questions were directed to Chairman Adam Smith and Representative Mike Rogers, ranking member of the subcommittee. The second hearing concerns on the proposed defense budget fell largely along partisan lines. Republican members expressed almost unanimous concern that the president's budget proposal was insufficient given China's ongoing investment in its military. Major lines of questioning touched on China's threat to Taiwan, the Nuclear Posture Review, and Afghanistan. Several members spoke emotionally about the dangers faced by Afghan interpreters should the Taliban gain control of Afghanistan. Several Republican members criticized the SecDef's extremism stand down, leading to a forceful and eloquent defense of DOD policies by General Mark Milley. Chairman Smith's statements emphasized that the proposed budget for DOD was an increase of $12 billion over last year. He highlighted the need to focus on value of funds spent and the importance of ensuring that programs meet their budget and fulfill their requirements. He also addressed modernization and the changing nature of warfare, development of emerging technology, and bipartisan support for changing how the services handle sexual assault. Representative Rogers' statements were focused on the emerging threat from China and what he described as a wholly inadequate defense budget to meet those threats. He was particularly critical of cuts to shipbuilding and future end strength. Thank you for watching the Weekly Interceptor on YouTube, now in collaboration with Patriot Bros. Click on the link in the description to check out their scholarships, merchandise, and blogs that are tailored for those tried and true Oozlefinch loving air defenders. Join us again next time for more air and missile defense topics. There's something in